Ground Branch is an early access tactical FPS game that may have slipped under your radar, but I just played it and was honestly blown away by some of the innovations and sheer game mode control that it gives you. This hidden gem shares a lot of features from games like Insurgency Sandstorm or Arma, offering a methodical movement system with shooting mechanics that are both tactical and accessible. It has massive levels that are kind of like mini Tarkov arenas, complete with tons of buildings, many different approaches, and environmental variety. You can play the game solo or in lobbies with other players, plus it features a deep mission customization system that doesn't require extensive mods or complex editing tools. Now, as it is an early access game, there are some issues with things like AI performance at the moment, but seeing past some of the early access rough spots, this game seems to offer a ton of depth and fun. Ground Branch is much more focused on its military structure and presentation than most other games. You play as a military counter-terrorist unit tasked with infiltrating a hostile location, dealing with any threats that might arise, and getting out alive. And before you even get into that, the game gives you a robust training area that takes the concept of a shooting range really to the next level. You spawn into a somewhat typical FPS firing range, but it's not a preset course. You can change the number of hostiles and friendly targets, whether the lights are on or off, and tweak your kit to suit the scenario. It's a deeper dive on the classic tutorial style system. And when you finish the course, you'll realize you're in an entire warehouse complete with a catwalk that gives you the overview of the whole area, and that this is just one warehouse in an entire complex of facilities, including a gun range, outdoor training course, and even a mock level set on a 747 airplane. The training area also introduces you to one of Ground Branch's most interesting customization options, the time of day system. If you've ever wanted to tweak the lighting conditions of a tactical FPS, Ground Branch lets you pick the time down to the minute, and even the day and month, as that will actually change the moon cycle and the lighting style at night, which is pretty incredible. And the training area of Ground Branch is basically just a microcosm of everything that the game offers and the presentation ensures that the immersion is more or less seamless. There's no overacted drill instructor barking orders at you and then praising you like a child for completing basic tasks. Everything in this mode is presented in a calm, cool, and realistic tone, all while teaching you the core fundamentals of the game, which are actually pretty different from your basic shooter. The biggest change you'll notice right away is a less typical control scheme. I sort of label it as accessible realism. Walk, sprint, and run are all broken out into their own keys, giving you more precise control on just how fast you want to move. On top of that, you can change your weapon stance between low, ready, and high. The low and high stances conserve stamina, which means your weapon handling is more stable at the cost of weapon ready speed. However, none of these stances serve as a major hindrance, and you can kind of set and forget your stance without too much penalty. But as you get more familiar with the game, changing your stances really kind of allows you to finesse your shooting mechanics. Now, the gunplay is where Ground Branch excels over a lot of other games in this genre. It's still weighty and methodical like other milsims, but it also doesn't get in your way. You can snap on the targets quickly and take down multiple, just like your John Wick. You can clear buildings like a veteran SWAT agent, or you can have long range firefights using your expert marksman skills. And this is further aided by the robust attachment system. There's honestly an overwhelming number of attachments from optics, foregrips, tactical lights, rail systems, and more. And all of them have multiple attachment points, giving you a lot more control control on how you want your gun to look and handle. Want a red dot sight with a three times magnifier? No problem. You can pick which red dot you want, place it on your gun's top rail, and then place a magnifier behind it or even in front of it if you wanted. Or you can just put a magnified optic on the top rail and put a canted sight on the weapon as well. It's not quite Tarkov levels of weapon modding insanity, but the depth and variety is enough that I rarely see players running the exact same setup. Now, the mission system is where the appeal of Ground Branch's customization becomes clear. You can pick the mode, map, time of day, modify the enemy count difficulty, and time frame to complete the mission. All of these options can be configured with a simple drop-down menu slider, or you can go way deeper. Now, when playing solo, you are limited to intel retrieval or terrorist hunt, but the multiplayer servers can host deathmatch, team deathmatch, a hosted rescue mode, a flag secure mode, and more. The maps themselves are pretty massive with tons of buildings and different routes to approach. As an example, the 747 map features a huge plane that you can explore the interior of, and it also has a section of the airfield to work your way through to actually get to the plane. 
Other levels include familiar staples of this genre, like a huge forest, Middle Eastern rural locations, military facilities, a power station, an oil rig, and more. Now, when getting into the options, the time of day stuff includes at least 10 different presets, but it also lets you pick a specific date and time, as mentioned before. Nighttime does give you more tactical stealth options and the ability to use NVGs to remain hidden from the enemies. And it's kind of cool picking different times of the month where you might get a full moon showing better light at night or almost no moon making it very hard to see without using aids. Unfortunately, the latest major update for the game did remove the weather customization options due to performance issues, but that's just another layer of depth that will be coming back to the game in a future update. Now, speaking of performance, I'm running on a pretty beastie PC and didn't run into any issues there, but I think it runs decently on lower end hardware as well. It also offers options like Nvidia's DLSS and Reflex Low Latency Mode, which is pretty nice to see from a smaller title. Now, when it comes to the AI, the customization goes even deeper. There's a handful of presets ranging from untrained to veteran, but you can modify dozens of other parameters like how they manage recoil, how fast they can turn, what weapons they like to use, and more. And while this level of customization is great, it also sort of reveals one of the first major issues that I have with Ground Branch. The AI basically behave dumb as bricks, even on the highest difficulty setting. They demonstrate an honestly hilarious desire to die. On lower difficulties, the enemies will constantly announce themselves by yelling that they hear you, or they'll shout something like, get ready. And when they see you, they'll yell out that they've spotted you and basically wait until you start shooting to further engage. And even with the dozens of AI parameters that you can manually tweak, it seems like they just have no tactics or decision making built into them. Shooting a hostile will alert nearby enemies that something bad happened, but they just kind of rush to the scene and expose themselves to you. They will take cover under fire, but they also seem to get bored and leave that cover after 20 seconds or so of fighting. There's no coordination between the bots either, so don't expect interesting flanking routes or pincer maneuvers. And this definitely sticks out considering the general pre presentation and emphasis on tactics with the game. Now, the other issue with all the customization is that the settings are totally visible before starting around, so you basically know exactly how many enemies that you're going up against and what to expect from them. It kind of ruins some of the surprise, so having some hidden randomizer options could definitely allow for more surprise and variety to keep you on your toes. That said, the customization offered here is still the big selling point on Grand Branch, the fact that anyone can change things up in meaningful ways without needing to learn code or open up different software is pretty big. It would be nice to have some finer control over, say, where objectives are placed, but given what's available and how accessible everything is, the end result is still a pretty good middle ground between, say, Arma and having something that's a totally preset system. Now, fortunately, the devs do have a roadmap with tons of improvements and content in the works, and some of the points of criticism that I just mentioned are scheduled for improvements in the next major updates. Better AI, a proper hostage mode with a AI civilian, vaulting animation, animations, playable female characters, a prone stance, light sticks, map updates, and more. And beyond the next big update, they're also working on stuff like re-implementing the weather system, an armor system, melee actions, AI squad mates, and a ton of other things. Also, if you don't want to wait for the devs to change stuff, the game even has its own modding scene as well. There's a nice variety of patches, weapons, and scenarios available on Nexus mods. Most of them expand on the game's existing content and add some new stuff like civilians that you have to avoid shooting. Now, when it comes to the overall presentation, Ground Branch's graphics are decent, but it looks good in a very generic way. There doesn't seem to be a big emphasis on art direction or a sense of style on display here, which does make sense given that the game is a more tactical milsim focused experience, but other games like Ready or Not, Insurgency Sandstorm, and Rainbow Six Siege all lean much more heavily into their presentation to create, I don't know, a game that feels more unique. There's also almost no work done in terms of environmental storytelling like there is and ready or not. The terrorists are just at a place without any real signs that they took it by force or pose a threat to anyone but the actual players. And lacking that narrative or heavier style influences, especially in Milsim style games, can make them really hard to stand out from the crowd. And that said, Ground Branch has been in early access for quite a while, I believe since 2018. So if it was going to make its mark, one might argue that it would have done so already. But I haven't been following development too closely, so there's a chance that it's sort of finally getting all the main features implemented now. 
maybe we'll see a surge from this game or maybe not. But what do you guys think about Ground Branch? Is the market already saturated with these types of games or is this something that you could see yourself hopping into? Let me know in the comments and next check out this amazing FPS that's being built by just one person. The indie scene is truly popping off these days and this is a game that I think should be on your radar. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.